Dear brothers and sisters, this morning upon awakening, I simply heard the words, the book of Revelation. So let's review the prophecy of Revelation given to Jesus Christ by God the Father. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear, and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. Revelation 1, 5-6 says, Jesus loved us, washed us, and made us kings and priests unto God. Praise the Lord. Revelation 1 7 says of Jesus Christ, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Jesus says in Revelation 1 18, I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. In Revelation chapters 2 and and three, Jesus gives instructions to churches that have left their first love, are persecuted, are compromising, are corrupt, are dead, are faithful, and are lukewarm. John says in Revelation 4.1, After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Immediately, says John, I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he who sat there was like a jasper, and a sardius stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne, in appearance like an emerald. And then we see in Revelation 4, 11, the elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him, saying, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Then the elders sing a new song in Revelation 5. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. In chapter 6, the Lamb of God begins to open the seals. The first four seals are the four horsemen of the apocalypse, the white horse to conquer, the red horse to bring war and bloodshed, the black horse to bring famine, and the fourth horse to bring death. The fifth seal reveals the cry of the martyrs, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? They are given white robes and told to rest a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and brethren that are to be killed as they were is completed. The Lamb of God opens the sixth seal and there's a great earthquake. The sun becomes blackened and the moon becomes like blood. The stars of the heavens fall to earth. The sky recedes like a scroll and every mountain and island are moved out of their place. Then the kings of the earth and the great men and the generals and the rich and the strong and everyone, slave and free, hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand before it? In chapter 7 we see an angel saying with a loud voice, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed, sealed the servants of our God 
in their foreheads. 144,000 of all of the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. After that, John saw a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing in front of the throne and of the Lamb, clothed with white robes, washed from the blood of the Lamb, and with palm branches in their hands, they called out with a loud voice and said, Salvation comes from our God, who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. Chapter 8 begins with the seventh seal, when seven angels are given seven trumpets. The first angel sounds the trumpet, and hail and fire mingled with blood are thrown to the earth, and one-third of the trees are burned up, and all green grass is burned up. The second angel sounds, and something like a great mountain burning with fire is thrown into the sea, and one-third of the sea becomes blood. One-third of the living creatures in the sea died, and one-third of the ships were destroyed in the Revelation. After the first trumpet destroys one-third of the vegetation, and the second trumpet destroys one-third of the seas, the third trumpet sounds, and a great star named Wormwood falls from heaven, burning like a torch, and turns one-third of rivers and springs of water bitter, and makes many men die. After the fourth trumpet, one-third of the sun, moon, and stars are darkened, and one-third of the day and night do not shine. The fifth trumpet sounds, and locusts with power to sting like scorpions torment those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads for five months. The sixth trumpet sounds, and one-third of mankind is killed by the plagues of fire and smoke and brimstone from a great army. Before the seventh trumpet sounds, in Revelation chapter 11, God gives power to his two witnesses to prophesy for 1260 days, clothed in sackcloth, 1260 days. When they finish their testimony, they are killed. And the people on the earth rejoice and are merry and give gifts to each other because the prophets are killed. But after three and a half days, the prophets are resurrected by the breath of life from God, and fear falls on those who see them resurrected. The witnesses ascend to heaven in a cloud, and a great earthquake kills 7,000 people. The rest were afraid and gave glory to God in heaven. Then the seventh angel blew the seventh trumpet, and loud voices occurred in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world did become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will rule as king forever and ever. Revelation 12 and 13 reveal the spiritual warfare that occurred. The dragon wanted to devour the Christ child and to devour Christ's children. Michael and his angels fought the dragon. The dragon deceives the whole world and has great wrath. Christ's children overcome the dragon by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and do not love their lives to the death. The dragon knows his time is short and persecutes Israel as well. But Israel is helped and the dragon continues to persecute those with the testimony for Jesus Christ. All of the world worships the dragon and gives authority to the beast who speaks evil against God, his name, his tabernacle, and all those who dwell in heaven. The beast makes war with the saints. Everyone whose name is not written in the Lamb's book of life worships the beast. Another beast makes an image of the first beast, and whoever will not worship the image is killed. The beast causes everyone to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, so that no one can buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, the number of a man, 666. Six, six. Whoever worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, 
He himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever. In Revelation 14, John looks and sees the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. The 144,000 have been redeemed from the earth. The Son of Man reaps the earth's harvest. John says in Revelation 15, 2, And I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had been victorious over the beast and his image and the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, holding harps of God. Then the Lord God pours out his wrath, and the seven bold judgments are released. The first bold judgment is when a foul and loathsome sore comes upon the ones who have the mark of the beast and who worship his image. When the second bold judgment is poured out, the sea becomes blood and every living creature in the sea dies. When the third bowl is poured out, the rivers and springs become blood. When the fourth bowl judgment is poured out, mankind is scorched by the sun. The fifth bowl is poured out on the throne of the beast and his kingdom becomes full of darkness and they gnaw their tongues because of the pain, but they continue to blaspheme the God of heaven. The sixth bowl is poured out and the Euphrates River dries up to prepare the way for the kings of the east and all the kings of the earth and the whole world gather for the battle of Armageddon. The seventh bowl is poured out and there's a great earthquake and the cities of the nations fall. Every island flees away and mountains cannot be found. Revelation chapter 17 to 19 speak of the fall of mystery Babylon, the evil world system, the ungodly end times religious system with global influence and power and control that is corrupt and sinful and immoral, heretical and blasphemous. Although a place of luxury, wealth and opulence, a center of worldwide merchandising, mystery Babylon will kill those who share their testimonies of Jesus Christ. Mystery Babylon will be associated with a federation of ten kings plus the beast, but the kings and the beast will conclude that such a financial, religious, and political system is no longer needed and they will turn against Mystery Babylon and burn her with fire. Babylon will be destroyed. Her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire. Revelation 18.4 says, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. In Revelation 19.6, John says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Praise the Lord. John sees heaven opened and a white horse. He who sat on the horse was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His name is called the Word of God, and the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. He himself will rule. On his robe and on his thigh is written, King of kings and Lord of lords. The beast and the kings of the earth gather together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. The beast and the false prophet who deceived those who received the mark and worshipped the image of the beast were cast alive into the lake of fire and burning with brimstone. The dragon, the devil, Satan, was bound for 1,000 years and thrown into the bottomless pit while the saints reigned with Christ for those 1,000 years. The souls of those who'd been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, lived and reigned with Christ for the 1,000 years.
but the rest of the dead did not live again until the 1,000 years were finished. When the 1,000 years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations to gather them together to surround the saints in the beloved city. But fire will come down from God to devour the rebellious uprising, and the devil will be then cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then John saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And John saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged, according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. And anyone not found written in the Lamb's book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. John sees a new heaven and a new earth. He sees the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, and he hears a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, there shall be no more pain. He who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The new Jerusalem had walls of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like clear glass, the foundations of the city were twelve kinds of precious gems, jasper, sapphire, chalcedony, emerald, sardonyx, sardius, chrysolite, beryl, topaz, chrysoprase, jacinth, and amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. There was no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeds from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of the street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. Jesus says, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Jesus says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. He who gives witness to the, these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen.